Hello, I'm Nick, and welcome back to Bourbon Distilled, episode number 10, an introduction to plastic bottle or cheap Canadian whiskey via Black Velvet. This episode is inspired by Vice Grip Garage and where I've seen Derek drink and hide Black Velvet throughout many of his videos. I've never had it before, so this will be a first for all of us. In this video, we'll do an introduction to Canadian whiskey and explain what it is. We'll also introduce Heaven Hill Distillery and their line of products. We'll taste some Black Velvet, actually two of their products. So cheap, I figured why not. And then, as is our tradition, we will taste Old Granddad Bottled and Bond and compare the two. Now, what is Canadian whiskey? I'm going to read here the law uh, from Canadian law that defines can Canadian whiskey. It must be mashed, distilled, and aged in Canada. It must be aged in small wood vessels for not less than three years. It must contain not less than 40% alcohol by volume. And it may contain caramel color and flavoring. <clears throat> Excuse me. Largely similar to bourbon, though perhaps less strict, in that bourbon has a mash bill requirement of 51% corn, virgin charred oak barrels, and made in the USA. Canadian whiskey is typically made from a blend of several different whiskeys that have been distilled or uh, made from one single grain. So the mash bill there's one grain in it, they distill it, and then once that product is finished, they mix those whiskeys together to produce the Canadian whiskey, as opposed to most bourbon, where the mash bill has several grains, and it's distilled and aged, and um, sometimes it's blended, but like a single barrel would, would not be. The grain that is predominantly used for Canadian whiskey is corn, and then rye is the second most popular. Uh, also, in contrast to American whiskey, which is typically distilled at 160 proof or less, the bulk of the whiskey used for Canadian whiskey is distilled at between 180 and 190 proof. The result of this higher distillation proof is that Canadian whiskey is lighter and easier drinking. And then arguably, <clears throat> the world's most popular Canadian whiskey is Crown Royal. Now, an introduction to Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill is a family-owned and operated distillery headquartered in Bardstown, Kentucky. And it was founded in 1935 after uh, Prohibition. It is the largest privately held distilled spirits producer in the United States. And it is the it holds the second largest inventory of aging bourbon whiskey in the world. All of the master distillers for Heaven Hill have been members of the Bean family, which you may be familiar with from the popular whiskey Jim Bean, which is offered by Bean Centauri. The Bean family has a long history in bourbon making and has contributed to many different brands over the years beyond the namesake brand Jim Bean. The list of brands owned by Heaven Hill is too long to list for this episode. We'll, I'm sure, do reviews of their products in subsequent episodes and get into more detail of their product line. As it relates to Black Velvet, Heaven Hill actually only purchased the distillery and the brand two years ago in 2019. Prior to that, like many whiskeys, it had changed hands several times over the years. Black Velvet is currently produced at the Black Velvet Distillery in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. And their product line consists of four products, two of which we will taste today and two of which I will probably never taste in my lifetime. Their products are the Black Velvet Original, which we have here today, Black Velvet Reserve, aged eight years, which we also have today, Black Velvet Toasted Caramel, and Black Velvet Cinnamon Rush. All together, it is the second most popular Canadian whiskey in the world, behind Crown Royal. Now, these are what the bottles look like. This is the Black Velvet Original. 
plastic bottle. This was, I believe, $9. This is the Black Velvet Reserve, which I believe was a little under $20. And this is the Aged Eight Year product. This is actually in the nice glass bottle. These are both labeled with uh, imported. Oh, actually, no, hold on. This is labeled, yeah, they're both labeled imported by Black Velvet Import Company of Bardstown, Kentucky. So they have been bottled since the acquisition by Heaven Hill. The original Black Velvet is 80 proof, 40% alcohol, and the Black Velvet Reserve is also 80 proof, uh, again, aged eight years, and the Black Velvet original is aged three years. So I think with that, we'll taste the original first. Like I said, I've never had this. Uh, it's interesting, I posted a uh, some posts on Instagram and Facebook earlier this week saying that this was coming and several folks replied how much they enjoy it or it was their grandfather's favorite drink. No cork here. Um, we, and we have the, as is often on a plastic uh, bottle, the flame suppressor or that's what I call it on top. Very light in color. I'd say very sweeter. Yeah, sweet, I would say. <clears throat> On the nose. Uh, I mean, very light in color, which for low age and the way it's made uh, makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say the nose. It's very sweet. Uh, I'm not even sure how to articulate what it smells like. It almost just smells like sugar. Like a candy smell almost. I don't know, like a generic candy. Like if you're in a confectioner or something. Uh, yeah, well, let's taste. Very mild, a little warmth in the back of the throat. In front of the palate, that sweetness, but like a, just a touch. I mean, not really. Um, yeah, not really descript sweetness. Maybe almost like a pear flavor. Like, like a ripe pear flavor. Middle of the palate dries out. Maybe a little oak flavor, but not much. And then back of the palate, end of the palate, some warmth, no real burn. I mean, super easy drinking, uh, as its name implies. Uh, apparently, I got the name Black Velvet because of its velvety drinking uh, properties and I, I would agree it's it's definitely smooth I would say not overly complex um, basically sweet in the front maybe like again a pear kind of sweetness the best description maybe I have to kind of dry in the middle and then not really much in the back of the palate to speak of at all Let's try the higher age uh, version again. This is a much nicer bottle than the original. Also no cork, even though it has a foil seal. Mm, not really much, hey Zeke. You don't need any of this, buddy. Yeah, not much nose on that either. Um, I'd 
say it's the same nose. Sweet. I mean, the color is darker, but still really light for a eight-year-old. Uh, a little more glycerin in the glass, it looks like, which would make sense from the age. Still just sweet. I mean, there's no real other nose that I get. Let's taste. Okay, it is different. Still super smooth. I would describe this one as even more velvety if we want to go with the moniker. Uh, the front is still sweet, that kind of that pear flavor almost. Really, not much dryness in the middle of the palate. No burn. I mean, this is super, super smooth. Um, the age has mellowed it, not really brought in a lot of oak flavor or anything. I would. I mean, for somebody that doesn't think they can drink whiskey neat, uh, or isn't used to drinking whiskey neat, there's no hotness, there's no harshness. I mean, it is a smooth, easy drinking whiskey. Um, you know, not particularly complex flavor, in my opinion, but super smooth and easy to drink. Well, let's taste a little Grand Edges for comparison. The dog is down here staring at me, wondering what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, let's see. Uh, again, you can even see in the bottle how much darker this is than the Canadian whiskey. Yeah, much more complex. The front, you get that spice I've talked about so many times. The middle... You know, it doesn't dry out like I would say the Canadian whiskey does, the black velvet. You still have that spice, and then in the back you get a little bit of heat going down your throat. Just to let you know that the whiskey's there. For my personal taste, well, Nice Grip Garage, I have to say I'm kind of impressed by this one. Um, and while this is not the first Canadian whiskey I've ever had, certainly not. Crown Royal over the years, but I did have a Canadian club kick back when Mad Men was very popular. Um, I do like it. I mean, the Black Velvet, it's good. It is super easy to drink, I would say. For somebody that, again, that doesn't think they can drink whiskey neat, this would be a good one to try. I bet you could. Uh, but for me, I like the more complex flavor, the spiciness of the rye uh, content and the old granddad, a little higher proof, actually, 100 proof. Um, so gr old granddad, still my favorite daily drinker. So, again, my plan is to keep these short, about 10 minutes. And the goal is to get them posted by Thursday noon, so that if you're shopping for the weekend, you have a new bottle to consider. For the next episode, we're going to do a more complete introduction to barrel-proof whiskeys, and we're going to do it via Angel's Envy Cask Strength. I have several different releases of Angel's Envy, and I'm going to pick this week which one we're going to do. It'll probably be one of the more expensive MSRP whiskeys we've done so far. And again, this is an episode is inspired by Vice Grip Garage, who is a seems to be based on their video content a, um, someone who appreciates black velvet um, I have to say I, well, I could see myself drinking more of this over the years finally I will do my best to keep things simple when I do use vernacular that is specific to the bourbon world I will do my best to break it down into common terms in other words I will work to create bourbon distilled Thank you for watching, and until next time, cheers.